Welcome to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nedling. You are about to discover impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you, so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Be sure you visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now tune in, get ready, and enjoy the journey of emerging as a leader of exception in the 21st century. Welcome everyone to the Find Your Leadership Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Vicki Nettling, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. The goal of this podcast is to bring topics and guests that will empower you to become that confident leader and take your business or your life to the next level. Today, my guest is Gitse Messina, and let me tell you a little bit about him. Gitse has over 20 years of experience in sales operations and management. He's helped companies implement sales methods and is the author of Money Call. In this book, you'd say, ask the following questions. Are you in a recurring sales industry and find that customers call you? Do customers start the buying process? Do you feel you should take, be taking more control of your sales instead of waiting for the customers to buy? Well, sit back and take notes because we're going to talk about energizing your recurring B2B sales today. So please join me in welcoming my guest, Gitse Messina. Thank you. Thank you. Pleased to be here. I am excited. You know, sales is something that is some for some a very much of a mystery. <laughs> it's either they love it or they hate it. Um, or they don't know what to do. And so I'm always happy to have people on that can help to unravel the confusion or the fear, whatever it is that's holding you back from being the cells, getting the cells that you need. So we're talking about energizing your recurring B2B cells. But before we get going, I always ask the simple question to tell the audience, where do you call home? Where do you live? Well, I call home Boca Raton, Florida, and that's where I live. I'm in Merida, Mexico today because I am the director of a LATAM division for a yes. HVAC organization. So I travel all through the U.S. and Latin America. Oh, not a bad gig. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, gave brief of, about, you know, the, the position of how we look at sales and things, but I'd like to, to share with the audience a little about you. You know, talk to us about your journey that led you to where you are today and um, and why you do what you do. Absolutely. So first, I am an industrial engineer and I have an MBA. So if you think about that, I'm a very logical, no artistic type of <laughs> professional. And if you're a leader in an organization and, and in, if you're thinking about your business, you should know what type of business you're in. Do you have recurrent sales or do you have one in a lifetime or one in a long time sales? So that's one of the first things that you need to think about. And when you are an engineer and an MBA, you don't think about sales. And like you said before, a lot of people are afraid of it because we've heard for so many times from so many years, sales is an art. And when you're an engineer or you're an MBA, Nothing that is artistic and professional, it's <laughs> something that catches your eye. You're not thinking about non-deterministic things. You want things that are measurable. You want things that are repeatable. So at the beginning, I wasn't very thrilled about sales. And it wasn't until I became a management consultant that I learned that in order to be a consultant, the first thing you need to do is sell your consultancy. So when they made me a manager, they said, well, now you're going to have to sell. And I said, what? People should come to me because I know it all, right? (laughs) Right. No, it doesn't happen like that. And the same thing is going to happen to your audience. If you are the owner of the business, you have to know what type of sales system does your business 
requires depending on the type of business. So let's talk about being scientific in sales and determining what type of business do you have. So recurrent sales is the type of business where the same customer comes back and buys. So a supermarket is a great example. Normally, even though we may go to three supermarkets, 80% of our sales or, or, or our purchases, we go to the same one. It's more convenient. We like the way they arrange things. We like the way they treat us. We like the merchandise that they have, whatever it is, we go back. Okay, so that's recurrent sales. Now, if you sell cars, if you sell real estate, if you sell software, that is a one in a long cycle sale. You're not going to sell a car every day to someone every month. You may sell two cars to the same family, luckily in one month, but again, they're not going to buy for five years. You may not sell a house to someone in 10, 15 years again. If they stay in the same neighborhood and they go some to another state, most likely somebody else is going to sell that. If you sell software, when you sell the software to a company, they're not going to buy that same software again next year, unless it's software as a service and then you buy it every month, you pay for it every month. But again, the sale is not done every month. The purchasing or the paying for the service happens every month but not the sale. Now, I work in HVAC, air conditioning, refrigeration, and in that industry, the manufacturer sells to the distributor on a recurrent basis every month, every two months, every three months, same sales. The distributor sells to the contractor every two weeks, every day, every month, every three months. Now the contractor sells to the homeowner once every 10 years. So that's where the cycle and the chain breaks. So you have to understand where you are in that chain and how does your customer needs help. For example, the contractor, he doesn't know how to do marketing very well. He doesn't know how to sell very well. He knows how to install the air conditioner really well but he doesn't know how to set it very well. He doesn't know how to market it. So if you're in a recurrent sales business, like the manufacturer and the distributor, you need to help the contractor with marketing and with sales techniques so they can be more successful and they can buy more from you. And knowing that is the first step into the science mm -hmm. because Prospecting is something that a lot of salespeople really don't like. And prospecting is very ineffective. It takes a long time to call so many people. And then if you're in a recurrent sales business, you don't need to do prospecting as much. So if you realize that, that's exactly what we're talking about. Now you're more scientific, you realize Hey, I don't need to call that mm. many people. I just need to understand what is it that people buy? Because nobody likes to be sold. We That's all exactly love to right. buy, right? Mm. So let's understand what my customer buys by asking the five key questions. What is it that you like about doing business with my company? What is it that you like about doing business with the competition? And you don't just stop at the first answer that they give you. Hey, I'm glad that you like the type of service that we provide. Now, what is service to you? Because service is too broad of a thing. Oh, I'm glad that you like the prices and that you like the way we earn our, um, our warranty. Now, what else do you like about doing business with us? And until you have three or five answers, you're not really getting to the nitty gritty. So those five key questions actually tell you what customers buy because we don't sell anything in our recurrent sales business. What we do is we help them buy. But when they say, you know, I really like the way the competition handles warranties. Oh, could you tell me about that? You don't, you don't defend yourself because you want answers. You want information. That's my new definition of sales, getting information, not selling anything, 
getting information so you can help them buy. And putting it all together, you will get a system. And a system is going to be much better than any sales techniques that you may find. Oh, what is it that makes you so successful in your business as a salesperson? You know, I don't really know. I just act the way I normally do. See, that is art. And that's where we want to get out. And that's why the book Money Call is about getting that system. So you don't do as much prospecting, wasting all that time, asking the right questions to understand what they buy and helping them buy. Easy enough. You know, I had somebody once tell me that um, you're not really a salesperson. You're just really an observer and a listener. Yes. Because you're listening, you're observing how people are, but um, you're really listening more than you're talking. And I think one of the things that shies us away from salesy salespeople is that they talk, 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 talk. And all we, you know, we don't have an opportunity for them to get to know who we are and what we need. And so I think what you're saying is right spot on. Now, what would you have to do in order to listen? What do you think? Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the right question. Oh, yeah, because yeah. Whoever controls the conversation is the person that asks the question. You see what I did there? Mm -hmm. right, I asked right. you a question instead of you asking me. So I control the conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's what a good salesperson should do. How does a doctor sales? They just say, hey, what's your problem? How long mm -hmm. has that happening? What were you doing? What did you eat? You see, they ask you several questions so they can make a diagnosis. Mm. That's what a good salesperson should do. Yeah, for sure. So whenever you get with the, the various clients, what is the process that you have to to allow them to start to implement the sales technique that's right for their business, their industry. Right. So there's no sales technique. We have a sales system. There, there is no technique. It's mm -hmm. just a system. And if you repeat it, it's going to work every time. So the first step is, are you in a recurrent sales business? So if your same customers buy frequently, then the money call system will work. Okay. If you are selling cars, most likely not. Okay. So now first step is recurrent sales. And most distributors, if you distribute paper, if you distribute anything that a customer buys frequently, then it's a recurrent sales business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first step is that. Second is, do your customers call you versus you contacting them and you find that most recurrent sales businesses especially in high season for example air conditioning now in the summer is going to be crazy right mm -hmm. so they're going to be getting a ton of calls so the customers are calling the business and a lot of those customers are not really customers because customers are those that pay that buy Mm -hmm. Those are people that are price purchasing. They're looking, they're trying to see who has the best price. So you're wasting a lot of time when you are not in control of the process. They're calling you, they're asking you for something you have no control. So you have to make a Pareto analysis. You have to see in the last two years, how many people have purchased $1 from me and then you will see you have 1,500 clients. Now, out of those 1,500, what 20% of those got me 80% of my sales? Mm. And usually, in our industry, it's actually less than 20%. So it's going to be 15 to 18%. And those are the guys that we need to watch. Now, there is a great opportunity in between the 21% and the 40% that most salespeople don't even pay attention to. And that's where the business of the money call system is fantastic because now what we say is 
let me train one person that is going to make outbound calls. We're going to be the one in control of the system. We're going to call the customer. We're not taking calls. Now, we're going to assign 100 customers to that money call person, and we're going to train them in what type of questions they need to ask. But at the same time, they will take calls from those 100 customers because for whatever reason, I may call you and I may not find you. I would leave a message and you would contact me back at some time. So I, I do need to allow for that to happen. So 80% of the time, 90% of the time, the salesperson will be reaching out to the customer. But 10 to 20% of the time, the customer is going to be reaching out to me. Plus, at the same time, you may have an emergency or something that is not related to what I asked you the last time I called you. But the key here is that the salesperson will have the control. Mm -hmm. The second step would see, I need to ask those five questions to understand what is it that they buy so I can help them. Hey, this is Guy Messina from XYZ Supplier. I really want to provide personalized service to you. When can we arrange for a 17 minute conversation so I can understand how to help you better mm -hmm. and to help you grow? And they'll give you a time, maybe right there and then, or it could be next Tuesday at three o'clock. And then you would have that conversation for those five key questions. And now you would take notes. You will not defend yourself. Doesn't matter how they criticize you. You want the information. Now you will write that down. You put it on your CRM and you will keep that information for two reasons. Once, when you quote, whatever you quote for them, you will make sure that you highlight those things that they say they buy. Yeah. And second, if they have an objection one day, hey, Guy, you know, somebody else has it cheaper than you. I said, yeah, but according to my conversation with you the other day, you told me that nobody handles warranties the way we do. Are you considering that into your decision? So the way to handle objections is also getting that information before you're setting. So you get that, but then you're, you're only going to do that once a year, once every two years. You, once you have those five answers to those five questions, you're not going to keep asking that every day. Mm. So then we make what we call quadrant questions. You need to understand what is it that they've been buying. In the last month, you see that they're not purchasing something that they normally do every month. Now you can call them and say, hey, Mr. Customer, like I said, I really want to provide personalized service. And I see that for whatever reason, you have not purchased what you normally do every month. Is there any reason for that? You just shut up now and listen and get information. Oh my God, I forgot. Oh, you know, I really found a better product somewhere else. But if you wait too long, it's going to be a lot harder for them to get them back to you. So mm -hmm. that's why that's the first up call that we make. It's what has been happening that is not normal to their buying part. Then the second type of call would be, why are they not buying B when they normally buy A from you? So to make an, an analogy of something that everybody knows, if you buy car wax, because you like to wax your car every weekend and you never buy tire shine liquid the person at the counter should say, hey, Guy, you know, you always buy this wax, but you want to keep your car nice and shiny, but you don't buy the liquid shiner for the tires. Is mm -hmm. there any reason for that? So that's the second type of question. And with those two, you're going to be getting so much information every month and you're going to increase your sales. And that's basically in a nutshell, what the money call system will do. That obviously you, you have other type of questions and you need to continue with other things that we need to do, but that will give a, a, a little bit of a background to why is a system and not just a technique. Does that make sense? Yeah. And as you were talking about it, I kept on in my mind thinking it, it, what you're doing is you're combining sales with customer service. You know, it's uh, how can you continually delight your customers so they don't have a reason to leave? And by asking those questions, when you see that they may 
be swayed by someone else, it gives you still that opportunity to act on it and, and share again, customer service as to how you, you might better serve them. Absolutely. So I think no, it's the brilliant. Difference is, the difference is we're being proactive. See, customer service is normally reactive. Well, You're but it calling, shouldn't be, but that's what I'm saying. Be, right? It shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't, shouldn't be. be. This is the key. Yeah. If you are proactive, you're in control. Yeah. If you are reactive, the customer is in control. So going back to what you just said, delighting the customer. If you have delighted the customer for 10 consecutive orders, now you have the right to say, hey, I feel that you loved everything we've done for the last 10 times. I've always called you to make sure you got everything on time, that you liked it, and you were always happy. Is there someone you know that would benefit from the same service that we do? See, yeah, after 10 consecutive good calls. So that is also part of the system. And, and this is why a system is going to be so much better. It's mm -hmm. more scientific and it's all based on numbers. That's why we called it money call because it's all based on numbers. How many customers you need? How many questions you need to ask? What is the amount of calls that you need to make in order to ask for a referral? What is the, the way to ask for that? So everything is systematic and mm -hmm. no art comes into the equation. And that is the big difference. I'd, I'd say no art comes into the equation, but I think a little heart has to come into the exactly. equation. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of heart. A lot of heart. Because you don't want to sell anything you yeah. really want to help and if you want to help you're going to take the time to see and there are going to be so many customers that are going to say oh thank you for calling me back following up on that quote i actually forgot to follow up on the customer about it let me call the customer my customer so i can call you back and let you know if if they are going to buy it so i can buy it from you so there's so many things that happen that are beautiful when you have a systematic way to mm. want to help people. But like you said, I love that. You have to use your heart into it. Don't want to sell to make money. You want to help. And by helping, the money will come. Yeah. Because people, you know, people feel that authenticity in the conversation and part of what I, why I have leadership tied to public speaking is because of, of the tone that you use. The, they feel the sincerity. They, they feel the heart, if you will. And if you're just talk, talk, talking, and it just feels like, again, that you're just a number and not a customer, you know, not Absolutely. a person on the other side. And if you listen, mm -hmm. they notice that you're listening. They told you X, you went out of your way to make sure that they got X in every transaction because nobody buys products. They buy the warranty, the service that you provide for that product. So now they say, man, this guy really listens. He helps me buy. I want to keep doing business with them. Yeah. And I've even had occasions where what I had to sell um, wasn't what they needed, but I knew someone that did have it. And so I made that recommendation and that plays volumes because it, it, again, it's showing that I'm not just doing this to better my bottom line. I'm trying to answer a need that you have. Absolutely. That's why the fifth question is so important because the fifth question is what niche of the market have you tried to enter and you haven't been able to that I could help you do exactly that? Because mm -hmm. as a distributor or a manufacturer, most likely you've sold to every niche in the market. So you have customers that mm -hmm. install air conditioning in hotels, for example, and the contractor that you're talking to, he would like to do that, but he doesn't have the resume in order to validate it. So mm -hmm. you could now talk to one of those contractors that do installation in hotels and say, look, you buy all your air conditioning for hotels from me. And I know that you do 
subcontracting. And I have a, a customer who wants to get into that business and perhaps you could subcontract them in order to help them grow. And they'll probably say yes, you see? And this is a way that, that you could help. Or you could also say, hey, I'm having training for the specific air conditioning that most hotels need to install in mm -hmm. the next few weeks. Would you like me to invite you for that training so you can at least get a little bit more information into that type of niche in the market? So they see that you're not just trying to sell what you sell today, but mm -hmm. you want to help them in the in the long run. That's why those five key questions are great. Perfect. Well, we in the beginning, I asked why you do what you do, and you kind of just went into the sales part. I, I want to go back to that. You know, in this journey that you had, what event, what moment, just said, I can't do it that way anymore. This is this is what we need. This is where things are broken and 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 how I might be able to make it better. So what okay. was that pivotal moment for you? So well, I would say I've had so many aha moments. And the first one was when I realized that I didn't like sales. I didn't feel that I was cut out for it because again I was an engineer and an MBA <laughs> and I need something deterministic, but again, my job required it. Yeah. So I said, okay, could you at least send me to a training so I can get a better idea? And I was very fortunate because they sent me to a training that was hosted by IBM with Roy Cheapwood. And he, he is one of those people in, in my book that I find very influential in my life. So that's, he's the first one in that list. Mm -hmm. And he told me that, sales is a process so you need to take things step by step mm -hmm. and that realization being an industrial engineer and knowing that everything is a process the way you yeah, wake up in the morning uh, you're, the you're like you yay <laughs> so i i woke up saying oh my god so there is a pattern here to follow but later when i got into this industry i realized that the way that we sold was wrong because we wanted to do prospecting. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. When I did a Pareto analysis, I said, what happened to all these customers that we're not talking to? We mm -hmm. don't understand what they want. What are we wasting all the time looking for new people that don't know who we are, don't know what we sell? Yeah. When we have 80, right? 21 from 100 percentage wise, right? That have not heard from us as frequently as we need to. So what are they doing? They're buying from someone else because those people are really paying attention to them or because they really like buying from them. Your best customers want to be your customers and your competition's best customers, they wanna be their customers. So that's why you need to focus on the 21% to the 100%. Obviously, you want to pick the 21 to 40 first in order to make sure that you understand those because that's where the big, big change is going to come from. That's why when we implement the system, we grow 25 to 30% right away. Wow. Because people feel that now you understand them. Now you're helping them. So they want to return the favor by buying from you because you're making it a lot, a lot easier to buy from mm -hmm. you. And that's all we do. And that's what the system does. So that is the reason. And that was pivotal for me when I realized that we're doing things wrong. We're wasting so much time mm -hmm. doing three activities in, in sales that kill a lot of salespeople's dreams. And obviously, the first one is prospect, prospecting. The second one is presenting. Mm -hmm. Our industry, we don't need to present so much. The The contractor, he knows what air conditioning is. He knows what efficiency is. He knows what type of technology is being used. So you don't need to do so many presentations. Mm -hmm. And then closing. Oh, my God. If you ask any newcomer into the sales business, they would say, I don't like prospecting and I don't like closing. You don't need to close anything. Help them buy 
and they will say, I'll take 10 of those. I'll take two of that. Please quote me on that. It'll be easier. Yeah. They know. And if you help, it's going to happen. And eliminate mm. those three activities and change it for the money call system and for recurrent sales is going to happen. And that is what changed my life when I realized mm. that this is what we need to do. And I, I am very happy that I work for an organization that has tons of companies that are in recurrent <laughs> businesses, right? So that I considered to be my lab. So when I started talking to different members, said, I think we should start with one person doing this. Yeah. And I think you're going to get better results. And boom, no one has just one person anymore. Anybody that started with one has three, four, five, <laughs> six, ten people in their money call department because they're making so much money. Over $2 million in extra sales in one distributor right here in the southern part of Mexico just mm -hmm. because they started with one person. They have three now. They are selling over $2 million that they didn't have. So mm -hmm. if you consider that, that is exactly why it made a change for me. Does that answer the question for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you shared so many great pieces of advice today. And and I uh, hope that people will go out and get your book and and start to see how it can help them be better in growing their businesses. So if those of you that are listening think, yes, Vicki, that's me, <laughs> please, how can I get to Nikit? Here, let me just show you. So his LinkedIn is the, the main way that you can connect with him to start the process. Um, obviously, um, he'll talk to you a little bit about the Money Call book and how you can get that, but just definitely search his name. Um, it's just his first name is G-U-I-T-Z-E. If you go to LinkedIn and search that, you will find Geet Masina, um, and that's Geet Say Masina. And I'm going to turn it over to Geet to talk to you about where on Amazon you can find his book, Money Call, and um, any, if you have any upcoming uh, uh, trainings or anything for them, just share that as well. So it's all yours. Of course. So just search amazon.com and go and if you write money call, the first book that is going to come up is mine. It's, a, it's an Amazon bestseller. It's a blue cover. And it's actually a novel because I wanted to write it in a way that it would make you feel that you're part of the story, that you're actually implementing the system. And okay. the story is about the son of a distributor manufacturer that wants to implement a new system and a new idea that he's having in order to prevent customers from taking control of the sale by calling them. He wants to make sure that he calls. And that's how everything starts. And the father says, you know, my father always said no to me. I don't want to be the same guy. So I'm just going to do the following. We're opening up a new branch in Boca Raton. So I obviously use my hometown, right? Uh, we're opening a, a, new um, a new division in, in Boca Raton. So you're going to take over that new branch and you implement the system and we'll see the KPIs between the other 17 locations and your locations and to see if you're actually doing better by the end of the year. If you are, then we can talk about changing the rest of the system. If you're not, then you're going to have to change to how we do things and the, the rest of the business. And that was the deal. And that's how everything started. And I think that it's going to, the story is going to catch people in and you're going to feel that you're part of it. The other thing that I wanted to do is I didn't want to write all these long books that repeat in every chapter, the same thing that they said the chapter before. <laughs> so it's about 106 pages. You're going to read it in two flights. You're going to get the numbers, the ideas, the questions that you need to ask, and you're going to see how it was implemented in the book and how we have implemented it in other companies. So it's the same thing that we've done so many, many times, and it will be easier for you just to follow along. And, and if you have any questions, reach out to me on, on LinkedIn, and I'll be glad to help you out. 
and put you in contact with people that have done it as well. So you can also uh -huh. see what they have done and what their process has been. And it's been a beautiful thing. And I hope that um, a lot of you people would get to start that process of implementing. I just don't want readers. I want implementers. I want <laughs> people to change their business. So good. Well, so much great information has been shared. And, you know, uh, I love how you do talk about the fact that, that you do have to ask a lot of questions and, and uh, the right questions. And so I hope you out there in the audience that are thinking, well, I don't know what questions to ask, then that's a great reason to get in touch with Geet and, and get that book money call and be able to start to change the way that you sell today. So as always, thank you so much for being such a great guest. My pleasure. I'd love to be here and uh, I'll be glad to come back again anytime. Awesome. And as I remind everyone that life is a journey and it's up to you to enjoy the ride. This is Vicki Nettling signing off. Thank you for tuning into the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast with Vicki Nettling, where we share impactful lessons that help you grow as an individual, grow your confidence, and find the positive and good within you so you powerfully and authentically become the best version of yourself. Remember to visit our website at www.findyourleadershipconfidence.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Find Your Leadership Confidence Podcast.